from heavenly garden to COVID haven, the rural cemetery as bucolic refuge. The COVID pandemic turned lives upside down and altered established behavior patterns in public space. Seeking respite from crowds, many took the novel approach of visiting cemeteries, especially those with exceptional landscape, architecture, and sculpture. Many of these cemeteries were products of the rural cemetery movement in 19th century America, which reflected new attitudes about death and transformed the traditional graveyard into a place not only for the dead, but also for the living. During COVID, many of these cemeteries experienced significant surges in visitors seeking refuge from crowds. In this way, these cemeteries functioned again as their designers had intended nearly two centuries earlier. But let me start here with a little personal history. Within the first few weeks of the COVID pandemic, with social distancing and many working from home, people sought refuge outdoors. On extended walks around my own hometown, I noticed more pedestrian visitors to local cemeteries. A colleague's Instagram post from Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn, New York, uh, one of America's greatest rural cemeteries, revealed that crowded public parks had forced her to find alternative sanctuary at Greenwood. I wondered if cemeteries might be enjoying a new appreciation among the COVID weary public. Could these resting places, especially rural cemeteries or garden cemeteries that were popular bucolic havens for enjoying nature, art and architecture nearly two centuries ago, be newly fulfilling their original design intent? Now, rural cemeteries were the result of sweeping changes in how early 19th century Americans viewed death and the repose of the dead. There were three driving factors. One was the state of traditional graveyards and burial grounds in late 18th and early 19th century American cities, which were expanding in size and density. These burial places were usually connected uh, with churches at the center of cities. By the turn of the 19th century, they were crowded and in poor condition. Burials were often in shallow graves, causing them to become uncovered. Decomposing bodies were feared as contagion sources, emitting harmful miasma and could contaminate city water supplies. Cholera and typhoid epidemics became more frequent. Civic leaders proposed that burials be moved outside the city center, away from human habitation. Increasingly, all across the country, city limits were extended and burials relocated. In fact, many graves were actually moved farther and farther away from city centers. A second factor were changes uh, of viewing the dead and the afterlife. 17th and early 18th century graveyards reflected a certain equality of the dead, interred with little distinction between memorial markers that reveal, reveal few personal details about the deceased, usually just birth date and death dates. All were equal in the eyes of a supreme being and would rise in the second coming according to Christian doctrine. In the first decade of the 19th century, however, death came to be seen more as a passage from one state of being to another. In his 1817 poem, Thanatopsis, one of that century's most lauded verses, William Cullen Bryant communicated the idea that human beings are creatures of the earth, more attuned to nature's teachings. In death, our mortal remains, uh, are mixed with all of the elements and all those who have died before for an untroubled rest. Bryant rendered nature as, quote, the great tomb of man, unquote. The dead would rest together all in one mighty sepulcher. The comforting presence of transcendent nature became more prominent and nature in rural cemeteries reflected this in their great displays of natural beauty, ravines, lakes, vistas, knolls, groves, and winding roads, which were managed through the newly evolving field 
of landscape architecture. Nature and the divine became more closely tied. We see this reflected in how some of the earliest rural cemeteries were relauded at the time of their creation. In his dedication speech for America's first rural cemetery, Mount Auburn in Cambridge, Massachusetts in September 1831, U.S. Supreme Court Associate Justice Joseph Story noted, quote, the natural features of Mount Auburn are incomparable for the purposes to which it is now sacred, unquote. He added, our cemeteries rightly selected and properly managed may be made subservient to some of the highest purposes of religion and human duty. The design of a rural cemetery equated nature with godliness. According to the Visitor's Guide to Hartford's Cedar Hill Cemetery, which opened in 1864, the American rural cemetery was, quote, a vast temple to the transcendent being, where the visitor senses the eminence of God in nature. A third factor was the growing interest in the creation of public parks as refuges from crowded, dirty cities. According to rural cemetery historian Jeffrey Smith, the people who founded and developed rural cemeteries understood that these were not just graveyards. They were green spaces that people would use on a regular basis. Fees for rural cemetery burial plots churchyards and town burial grounds typically did not charge for burial, were used to finance rural cemetery landscape design, planting, and maintenance. As Jeff Smith describes it, quote, a green space was considered a relief from crowded and polluted cities. Landscape architect Andrew Jackson Downing, an early champion of city parks, observed in 1849 that the idea of a rural cemetery took the public mind by storm. Does not this general interest prove that public gardens near our large cities would be equally successful? Public parks, such as Hartford's Bushnell Park, the country's first publicly funded park founded in 1853, later followed the model of rural cemeteries, which were intended as places for the living to commune with nature and partake of the shared memory of those who had gone before. It was not until the late 19th century that public parks began to replace rural cemeteries in these same functions, except for, of course, burials. Rural cemeteries fulfilled their founders' dreams. Many of these cemeteries, especially those located on new trolley lines, became popular leisure spots as work hours decreased during the latter 19th and early 20th centuries. Victorians in their finery crowded cemeteries on Sundays, some picnicking amid the graves of their interred relatives and friends. According to cemetery historian Marion Yalom, it wasn't until the second half of the 20th century, with increased mobility and the rise of regional metro areas, that visiting cemeteries on a regular basis became a less common activity for most Americans. Now, COVID changed all of this. Many of the cemeteries that I consulted in researching this paper, many of them rural cemeteries, verified significant increases in visitors during the pandemic's early weeks. A newspaper article reported that a stay-at-home mom in Detroit visited five cemeteries in the pandemic's first few weeks as she didn't feel comfortable taking her children to overcrowded city parks. Visitation rates to cemeteries abated a bit as the pandemic eased, but some report that even today, visitors still exceed pre-pandemic levels. Staff at the 270-acre Cedar Hill Cemetery in Hartford noted an uptick in the number of visiting walkers in the cemetery. Woodland Cemetery in Dayton, Ohio, experienced a similar expansion of visitors during the pandemic, as did Oak Hill Cemetery in Washington, D.C. Many cemeteries kept their gates open while other places of refuge closed. According to Jensen Allen, 
executive director of Graceland Cemetery in Chicago, which is the final resting place of such architects as Daniel Burnham, Louis Sullivan, and Mies van der Rohe. With the advent of COVID, the city of Chicago shut down its lakefront trail along Lake Michigan, which is not far from Graceland Cemetery, while other cemeteries decided to close. According to Allen, quote, we experienced a level of visitorship that never existed at Graceland before. There were literally at least a thousand individuals coming through daily, Allen adds. Once the Lakefront Trail reopened in Chicago, the number of visitors eased somewhat, but has remained higher than pre-COVID rates. Some cemeteries responded with new visitor education programs and activities. Oakland Cemetery in Atlanta started contactless scavenger hunts that could be downloaded online, along with free picnic maps for folks to get takeout from local restaurants and explore the cemetery to find a place to eat. This recalled the lost tradition of the 19th and early 20th centuries of visitors sharing a meal in a cemetery. Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn extended its hour hours and opened all four of its gates. Usually only two were open. According to Nancy Goldenberg, president and CEO of Philadelphia's Laurel Hill Cemetery, our numbers really skyrocketed. She reports that 43% of the year's 2020 visitors came in the last two weeks of March, right after the pandemic started. One of the most vigorous responses to increased COVID visitors was Forest Lawn Cemetery in Brooklyn, Buffalo, New York. Sorry. According to Laura Fitzgerald, Director of Interpretive Programming at Forest Lawn, Buffalo's Frederick Law Olmsted design park system quickly hit capacity and visitors escaped to the cemetery, which also created a video about its history and the rural cemetery movement. A grant the following year allowed the cemetery to invest in disposable headsets to aid in visitor tours. Forest Lawn even contemplated a drone tour program, but with the pandemic easing, that idea was shelved. The COVID visitors flocked to cemeteries to seek open space for health reasons, for social distancing, and to isolate themselves from the maddening crowds. But COVID visitors also found a form of solace in the presence of those who passed before them, setting the pandemic in an existential perspective. Cemeteries, especially older ones, offer environments that might invite us to reflect upon our own tenuous circumstances. Time spent there in the presence of those who'd gone before us is a reflection of our ultimate reality, which exists beyond the grand designs we fix upon the otherwise random pattern of our lives. As we read the inscriptions, we discover those who succumb to wars, epidemics, and childhood sicknesses. The history recorded in a cemetery reveals that these people were as vital and alive as we are right now, with dreams and plans that seemed within their grasp. Those imagined futures might not have come to pass, the stones tell us. But when they were alive, expressions of human kindness and understanding are really what all people had and continue to have. In the space of the cemetery, it is a valuable reminder. Thank you. <laughs>